Hey guys, my name is Gabby and I play on the NA server for the Global Soul Worker. And I've been playing casually since the release date and I'm almost cap level and I've learned a lot on the way there. And I hope that I can teach you guys a lot of new information or useful information that will help you level up as well. So I have 10 tips for you and maybe possibly a bonus tip. And if you guys have any questions, be sure to leave comments down below and I will be do my best to answer them. Tip number one is to dismantle all blue or green gear that you obtain through dungeons. Now you don't want to do this to unique gear because that's something that you can sell in the marketplace, but with this type of gear, you're not going to sell it, I guarantee you, so it's better to dismantle it. So there's two ways to dismantle it. I have an item called a magic hammer. You guys, I don't remember how I got these. I know they're complete garbage and I only have them to show you what they're used for. But basically, you right click it, you select dismantle, and you choose the gear you want to dismantle and press OK. And it'll say OK. And you'll get a gear, a piece of gear for it. But it doesn't tell you what you got, but I got star platinum from that one. Now, I think the way that most people do it is they run over to Zivis over here. They go to shop and they press dismantle. They run this hammer over all the items they have, 10 at a time. And then they press OK, you press OK, and it shows you what you get. And you get this important currency called ether, which is used to upgrade your skill, or not your skills, your weapons and armor at later levels. And it's very important to have this so that later on you're not struggling to upgrade gear from this type of currency because you need gold or you need your zeni, zenai, and your ether to upgrade. Tip number two. Now this tip is, I wish I had known about it sooner. It has to do with dying in dungeons. So, when I was in Reco Town, the starter town, I died a lot. I was horrible, I felt like I got three shot over anything, and I would just spam respawners non-stop, because I was like, dude, this game's impossible, it's like the Dark Souls of like ARPGs and all of this stuff, and then, <laughs> I don't know who said it, so I'm sorry that I cannot credit the person, but someone said that if you die in a dungeon, if you're like in a party and it's not the boss, you can just leave and rejoin and not use your respawner. So I don't believe people really die from mobs later on, it's more of dying to bosses. But early on if you're in Reco Town playing with friends and you die, just leave and come back and make sure they don't start the boss because in the boss room if you die and leave you can't rejoin. So be sure to save your respawners just for the bosses. And that's these things over here, and you get a ton of them from completing um, your season lists for zones. So as you can see, if I show you the rewards for this, it's, or not for that, sorry, let me see. You get three respawners every level two from each one of these, and they can stack up to be quite a lot, and they're very helpful. So. Be sure to complete all your towns to get that. On top of that, you also, as your big reward, get uh, Akasha Transmitters. Tip number three. You want to upgrade your weapon to plus four around every ten levels. So you want to get a new weapon every ten levels and get it up to plus four. Now, my weapon is plus five right now. You don't really need to do that. Plus four is actually good enough. This is a level 45 weapon and I'm still doing fairly well. I don't recommend actually upgrading your armor like I did. I did mine to plus three because I noticed myself getting one shot and I was kind of tired of it. So there's that. But you don't need to do this, but if you feel like you're getting one shot, go ahead upgrade your armor only to plus three because three to four can actually fail a lot even though it doesn't have a chance of exploding. And the weapon can still fail quite a bit. So on top of that, at level 16, there are a set of weapons. I don't know the name of all of them, but they give... Uh, I don't think Haru's is posted right now, so I can't give you Haru's, but the Dreadnought for, for um, Erwin is one of them. For Lily, it would be the Grinder. And this, these give you 10% XP from the enemy. And for Stella, it's going to be the heavy metal. 
these will help you level up quicker. They're, they seem to be kind of expensive right now, I don't know why. You don't need this because later on gear just comes with XP things. Like I bought my gear based on like XP from enemies. This is 7%, 5%, 7%, 7%, doesn't, it's not in my weapon, but like 7% from this, 5% from this. You can pretty much find it everywhere. Also, not to mention there's titles that do that, and I will mention that later. But just swap your weapon out every 10 levels and only get it to plus 4 because anything after that is a waste and not necessary to uh, get through the game quite easily. So tip number 4 is actually to grind steel graves every day. On the North American or on the global version of Soul Worker, you get 5 entry accesses into steel graves. Now. 5, 10, and 15 drop blueprints according to levels 35, 45, and 55. The gear later turns into um, much better gear. I, I'm not entirely sure, but that's generally the gist of it. As a lot of people say, do steel graves every day. I don't do it because I don't find it fun. It's really boring. It's it's whatever. Um, you should grind it even if you don't want to use that set and you want to use another one. You should grind it just for the money that it comes or that it can give you by selling the materials or the possible blueprints. But some of the blueprints are actually very expensive. So if we just look up a random like random MK3 blueprint, Aru's is 12 million, and that's like the level 55 one, obviously. And Erwin's is 10. Oh, that's just for the gun. But some of these can be expensive, and they're very scarce. We can tell, like this. This helmet alone, not even the blueprint, is 11 mil, so very, very hard to get and probably a good way to make money if you wanted to do that, but if you're me and you're lazy and you don't do that, oh well, but I thought I should include that because it's important to the game and how it goes around. Also, you get these side quests that give you steel graves resets, and it does reset all five, not just one. You get two from completing 1 through 5 in Candace City, and then in Grace City you get 1 from completing 5 through 10. So 2 from each, you get a total of 4. I've used 1, I have 3 left, so that's always a good thing to keep in mind when you make sure you take those quests before you complete Steel Graves so you can get extra attempts to run it. Tip number 5. So this one matters more late game than it does early game, but it's still a beginner tip. Um, anytime you see a piece of gear, so we see that there is this, there can only be one, uh, unique chest guard piece. Now, 6 mil. However, if we press shift, it says excellent 99%. Next to excellent, it says 99%. So that means for these stats that are listed, it's pretty much closer on the higher end of being extremely good. Now, this is actually really good because it has a lot of health attached to it. And quite a bit of, um, attack. Pretty decent. And this is how you can check if gear is actually good or not. So let's look at Muscle Flex, which is like a late game piece. Let's look at it for my character Stella. So if we just run our shift key over all of these, we can see the rankings. So this is like an average piece, it's 56%. This is 62%, 50%. This is a good way to check if you're like min-maxing properly um, based on the stats that are given. So it doesn't necessarily like like the stats that are given and then it's the min max for that not necessarily um, the best stats because it, I there's like gear that can be like 96% excellent and it'll have XP on it but like you don't really care too much about the XP stat when you're max level so just be wary of that type of thing now getting gear that's 50% is not the worst but if you're like a heavy um, if you want like the best gear like this one right here this says it's 96% however I wouldn't choose it because I don't care about XP from enemies and I'd rather have like a bonus um, a stat in attack or crit or like anything like that. So just be wary when you're looking at these stats however, it can be useful to, to determine if the gear is actually good if it has the stats that you want. Also it shows you stat of, or set effects on the side and other important things. It shows you like upgrade effects if you get this like plus 4 and it's, it's really useful information and I didn't find this out until recently so I know what to do. Tip number six. So this one can be common sense, but maybe not at the beginning. So 
Say you just finished a story quest, the next zone you need to be, for example, the latest issue I ran into was I needed to be level 54 to clear episode 4 of the Ark ship. So what I had to do was I was left at like 70% and I had to grind episode 4 manic of the previous district I had just completed, which is this uh, Ark, Arkron, Akron, uh, Akron map. And so it's episode 4 and you want to press auto team because um, Manic can be hard to solo later in the game. Also on top of that you get 2% XP per person in the party So you get even more XP when people are in the party And I've heard that you do get better drops, but I'm not so sure but it generally just makes it easier to party with people So you should so you should press auto team and you can get into a party The reason I'm not going to press you to show what it looks like is because I could instantly get put with three other people And then I'd be stuck doing a dungeon and not being able to explain to you guys so you want to spam the uh, manic 4 episode of the previous district you had just completed um, as a general rule of thumb to level up effectively and efficiently. Now on top of that, um, if you're into side quests and doing that jazz, you can complete all the side quests as well. A lot of people don't think it's a great use of your energy. Personally, I have more fun doing side quests than brain numbing manic missions 24 7s so I'll save the manic missions for last and do all the side quests first. But that's a good tip to level up if you ever feel like you're stuck. Tip number seven is probably one of the most important tips I'm going to tell you. <laughs> and you have no idea how frustrating it is when I don't see people with titles on. So let's talk about titles. Titles are very important. Now, um, early on, it doesn't really matter what titles you use. Just use them because they give you stats. I think the first one you get is like Life Sign and Soul Worker. And those give you like some attack damage and things like that. Later on, as you complete achievements, you get better and better titles. Some can help you farm um, Zene, some can help you farm XP, some can just give you raw good stats, and this is important. Now, everyone and their mother runs around with um, Repair King Big Hands or something like that. Yeah, yeah, Repair King Big Hands as I'm looking at people. They, that's like the most common title you'll see, and I'll explain why. So, this title is actually extremely popular. I actually have it equipped myself, it just doesn't look like it. I'll show you how to vanity title in a second. But Repair King Big Hands actually gives you 10.5% uh, extra Zenai from enemies and 10.5% extra EXP from enemies. Now that's really good for leveling up and that can help you a lot with uh, getting gold early game. Also gives you 3.15% attack damage and 3.15 defense, which is always useful no matter what. So it's probably considered the greatest leveling title. Now I'm going to show you how you get this title and what you do is as you've been collecting your achievements because you're completing them you need to go to um let me see I think it is under items okay so you get uh, Gruten coins for repairing your items until one day you repair for 300k uh, zenai and it gives you Repair King Big Hands, the title I just showed you. So you need to repair this much in gold. So I would start repairing from a young level because it's kind of an investment to your EXP. So even though you know you're gonna be throwing your gear away, always, always just repair. Spam repair until you get this title because it's awesome. So I showed you that it's actually equipped for me, but it doesn't read that way. So the thing is, is um, let's uh, scroll down and let's find it. So these are highlighted in like an orange color. This means that's the title that is being used for stats. Now, you see these check marks on the side? You can click the check marks and this will be your vanity title. This covers that title. That way you don't have to look like everyone else, like Repair King, Big Hands, this and that. So that's a nice tidbit if you don't want to show that title and be more unique in your own aspect. Tip number eight might be a little bit controversial. It depends on how elitist you want to be in this game, or if you want to be more of like a fashion worker player, like myself. Um, so there are these really rare uh, chips called weapon upgrade chips. I'll show you them. So they're called weapon upgrade chips, and as you can see, they're very expensive. This is 650k. And people sell them in stocks. Now, what you use weapon upgrade chips for is getting your weapon past plus six. Now, the stats get insane after plus six. However, so does the fail rate. 
<laughs> so you need a lot of anti-destruction cards and you need a lot of weapon upgrade chips. And every time you fail, it'll eat your anti-destruction card and it will eat your weapon upgrade chips. So um, it takes a lot of investment and it takes a lot of patience, especially since weapon upgrade chips are extremely rare, almost impossible to farm because I actually sold all of mine yesterday and I only had 13 and I'm level 54. So um, that should say something because you probably need more than 13 to get up in your weapon upgrades. So, extremely rare, extremely expensive, and any like whale player will probably instantly buy them. Good way to like be a free-to-play player and be like buy cute clothes that you want to buy, anything like that. However, if you want to be a stronger player, I would recommend saving your chips, as they're very hard to get. I've farmed a ton of uh, Zenai and spend it on these weapon upgrade chips. However, I might wait for the market price to shrink a little bit. Because just like a week ago, these chips were only 300k each, and now the price has skyrocketed with the help of the cash shop coming in and people being the max level and potentially bots gold entering the economy. So I'd wait for the economy to maybe stabilize a little bit more. But right now, if you want to sell them, sell them because they're super expensive and a great way to make money. And people will need them. There was always going to be that one player who wants to have his plus nine weapon and smash things really easily. Tip number nine. So on my journey to see what like questions people ask the most, probably one of the highest questions ever asked is, what do you do with all the freaking brooches you get? You get so many brooches and they're kind of crappy. So this tip is actually quite useful. Um, you can go to this Grutenomat machine the shop go to functional and you can buy an inferior brooch fuser and eventually when you have normal brooches like these ones you can use the brooch fuser but for us we're going to be using the inferior brooch fuser so as you can see i have five brooches up here and they're pretty bad i also have a few brooch fusers i'm going to use one and we are going to fuse all these brooches together and this will clear up your inventory because you can't drop them, you can't dismantle them, you can't do anything. So we want to fuse these together, so let's see what we get. Um, it's pretty bad, but we cleared up the slots for, and have the potential to get a better brooch. That's how you get rid of brooches, I recommend that because 50 Gruten coins is nothing, I have 2k and I religiously spend my Gruten coins, so should always do that to you lower your collection and potentially get better ones. Okay, so tip number 10. Now this tip might not be so obvious if you are a free-to-play player and you're never interested in going into the cash shop. However, if we go into the cash shop, we can see that we have two free items available to us. I have claimed them already. But you can see that um, it says now free, I've claimed them, but right when you open the Steam Cash Shop window, it will have this Dynamite Power Vitamin Z, and this gives you 100 energy points instantly. And then you get a community mat, which gives you, uh, for 30 minutes if you sit on the mat, you get one energy point per minute that you can share with four other people. So if you have a guild, you have friends, y'all can swap mats and get energy points and just have like nice leisurely AFK time. But you want to grab these because it's open beta and this will not be permanent. Okay, and so for our bonus tip, I'm going to teach you guys how to keep track of reserved items. So, say there's an item you really want. For me, it'd be this like sweet confectioner outfit, right? Um, let's see. So we'll do confectioner. Like, let's look at the shoes. So I want like sweet confectioner shoes. All I have to do under note is press this star and it will show me all of the shoes. Like once I click reserved items and it will take me to that page instantly without me having to type or check it. You can also uh, star or, un or you can unstar in your reserved items and then it won't be there next time. So that's just a nice little bonus tip and I hope that you guys enjoyed this guide.